So now we'll have the Bureau of Indian Affairs update, and today here in place of Feline Haven, we'll welcome Dave Koch, who's the Acting Chief Forester for the BIA. All right, well, thank you very much, Kelly, and thanks again to ITC for having me uh, uh, pitch it here today for Feline Haven. Um, my name's Dave Koch, uh, Acting Chief Forester. Uh, I'm gonna give you a classic analytical forester PowerPoint presentation for the next 20 minutes, so here we go. So what are we doing uh, in uh, DC about all these positions? Uh, we've got, like I mentioned the other day, there's 327 vacancies in the Office of Trust Services, I'm sorry, 327 total positions in the Office of Trust Services uh, and there's 180 vacancies in the organization. So like, like I mentioned the other day, we're in a rebuilding mode in the, in, uh, the division of forestry. Uh, we've, got, we've made a tentative uh, offer for the chief forester position. I can't divulge the name, but we have made an offer for that position. Uh, we are uh, in the process of establishing two timber sale forester position, positions, one of which I am currently encumbering. Uh, we've got uh, a new forest products forester in Roger Jensen. Roger, stand up right there. He's going to be the new forest products forester, marketing, branding, forest products, all that stuff. Uh, and a policy analyst forester we've got on the books, and then also the vice Aaron Baldwin position, which is the fire management protection specialist position, which we're, we are in the process of recruiting for right now. So here's the classic forestry pie chart. Um, the forestry program is, is about a $50 million program, and it's comprised of uh, these five different components. The forestry program, which is the TPA dollars, is your base funding to essentially prepare and administer timber sales. Uh, the forestry projects money is for your, uh, your forest development, for the uh, reforestation, thinning, timber harvest initiative, uh, and uh, inventory and planning. Uh, there is uh, 951000 that's set aside for central office operations, and there's uh, $1.23 million for regional oversight. Uh, and then 636,000 for forest health projects. And by the way, folks, there's going to be no uh, year-end money distributions this year because I did such a good job in executing the budget. I may, in fact, go deficit. So, um, but, but no problem. Jim Douglas told me that if I dress up as a sage grouse and dance around the main interior building, I should get some more money. So bail me out there. Thanks, Jim. Okay, I wanted to bring, uh, bring attention to these regional oversight budgets. Um, I was checking this out the other day, and it, it kind of, it's startling, you know. Look, for example, we've got Southwest, they have a regional oversight uh, budget for forestry of $42,000, and that's supposed to pay for their entire forestry staff. Um, same, similar story throughout all the regions. So one of the things I'm looking at doing is, uh, is somehow beefing up those uh, accounts through magic and card tricks. Um, here's the BIA forestry budget. Uh, like Mark Phillips said, in 2016, we're looking at about a 4.179 increase. Uh, that's, uh, if that goes through, 2 million of that is for forest development, 1 million of that is for resource management planning, and the remaining 1 million is for endangered species related work, NEPA work. Here's the, the great flatline forestry budget. Um, I could extend back another 10 years and show you that it's been this way for about 20 years. So uh, we're, we're starting to see some movement, we're starting to see some bumps, and that's a good thing, but you know our budget's been basically flatlined for a long time. Uh, you know, we talked about, uh, Phil talked about, you know, we're all one Indian organization here. Um, this just demonstrates the distribution of our forestry funding among uh, either direct service programs, so that's BIA folks out there doing work for tribes, 56% uh, of the pie in terms of funding, and uh, 638 contracts is 32% of the pie, and self-governance compacts are 12% of the pie when it comes to the forestry TPA budget. 
if you look at the forestry project budget, that distribution is a little bit more heavily weighted towards self-governance programs. <laughs> how much harvest, how much timber do we harvest last year? Well, 432 million board feet, and that was up about 100 million board feet from the pre previous year, from FY 2013. Uh, in terms of value, $61 million uh, is what was made in stumpage receipts, and that's up about $19 million from the previous year. How do we compare with respect to our um, national allowable annual cut? Well, here you can see um, that uh, relative uh, difference. We have a, basically a biological, well, an AAC of uh, 750 million board feet, and we harvested somewhere in the neighborhood of 430 million board feet. How did we do regionally? Well, Northwest region did pretty good. They hit about 70% of their target, which is not too bad. Eastern region, about 63%. Midwest region did good, about 60% of their AAC. And, it, and then it goes down. Um, and it goes down for various reasons, reasons, and a lot of it has to do to the lack of converting facilities uh, in certain parts of the country. What's the opportunity cost of not harvesting that full allowable cut? Uh, so 318 million of that full allowable cut was not harvested. Using 2014 average stumpage rate of 141 bucks a thousand, uh, potential extra tribal revenue to tribes in 2014 could have been about 45 million. Uh, and the potential acreage, additional acreage treated would be about 60,000 acres. Forest development accomplishments, 2014, uh, we planted 14,546 acres and we thinned about 24,000 acres. And this is the five-year trend for forest development accomplishments uh, with respect to both reforestation and PCT. But what do we need? Well, here's the inventory of need as cataloged by Mike Benedict and his staff at Bofarp. Uh, we need, uh, there's 314,000 acres that need to be planted out there right now. There's 620,000 acres of pre-commercial thinning and there's uh, 2.2 million acres in woodlands health treatments. And I'm, I'm not using the term restoration anymore because after Larry Mason gave his talk the other day, I'm totally freaked out, Larry. So I'm, stick, I'm staying away from restoration. I'm just gonna call it like health treatments, okay? Forest health treatments. Uh, forest health protection, like I said, we got $636,000 from the uh, Forest Service. Uh, that's a transfer fund that comes over every year. We did uh, submit 25 projects requesting about 1.6 million. Uh, we got 636,000. It was a decrease this year, 132,000 bucks, and I'm gonna try to figure out why that was the case and see if we can, uh, BLM ironically increased by about that much, so. Youth and forestry initiative. So, we continue to receive funding for these youth and forestry initiative projects. FY 14, 1.1 million went out, impacted 352 tribal youth. And then uh, FY 15, another million went out, impacting 471 tribal youth. So this is kind of like a two-prong approach to building this next generation of foresters by uh, getting the youth involved at all levels. So we also have this uh, forestry climate planning and geospatial capacity initiatives. Uh, in 14, $2 million went out to 41 projects across the country. And in FY15, 48 programs were funded at about $2.8 million. And uh, this climate planning money, it's basically money for inventory and planning work. It's for stand examinations, it's for CFI, it's for all this stuff we do on a daily basis. So don't get confused about what this money should be used for. Okay, and then there's Sean's climate change program. Sean Hart, you know, is the czar of climate change. And basically this is the information he gave me to provide to you that the, the FY13 through 15 funding, we're building tribal capacity and we're doing all the strategic planning. In FY16, if we get this additional money, which is, uh, we're asking $20 million extra, um, 
we're going to greatly expand our vulnerability assessments and develop programmatic plans so that in FY17 and beyond, we're basically going to be, those dollars are going to be programmatic and we're going to be reprogramming um, the funding to the actual forestry budget line items, uh, fish and wildlife, ESA, for actual project implementation. So we're, we're ramping up, we're moving from planning to implementation. Carbon policy, we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, Sean's been kind of taking the lead on this, but the solicitor rendered an opinion and basically sequestered carbon is not a trust asset, so it's not subject to the same regulations uh, that we have for forest products. Uh, and there's no trust obligation to manage carbon. Uh, carbon sequestration may require forest management plan updates, and I'm looking forward to the discussion on the whole carbon, carbon policy. We do need to assemble a team to draft policy and guidance, though, for Bureau of Indian Affairs and for the tribes. Forest management planning status. So Mike and his folks at Bofarp have been tracking this stuff. Uh, we're trying to get 100% compliant in terms of tribes and their management plan requirements by the end of this fiscal year, so by September. Uh, we're currently at about 79% um, and 94% uh, in terms of acres covered by plans. And I don't know what happens at the end of the fiscal year when we don't meet the target, um, but they want us to get it done. This is something that went back to uh, uh, OMB's request that we get this done by this date. And I don't know if they cut off my right arm or what happens, but something will happen, they tell me. Uh, real quick, reserve tree rate lands, a lot of discussion about this already. And, uh, you know, the key here is that, um, you know, we're meeting trust responsibilities both within and adjacent to, treating, uh, to treaty rate lands. The devil's in the detail in terms of how we, we implement this. I've been having a lot of sidebar discussions. People are concerned. But, uh, you know, Aaron and his folks at NIFC are, gonna, are coming up with a good implementation plan. Resilient landscapes, uh, this year, you know, there was 10 million available. Like I said the other day, we only got 600,000 of that and sage grouse ruled the day in terms of the funding, uh, but that will probably change in years to come. TRM, workforce augmentation. So uh, basically we got a bunch of money to uh, increase our workforce. There's basically $6 million that's been distributed to the regions to augment the workforce, the preparedness workforce. We're really concentrating on these regional con contract specialists to improve the invoicing process. We've had this longstanding difficulty of tribes invoicing in a timely manner and reimbursing the tribes for the work that they do in suppression. And, uh, and, and with that, the the branch of fire is standing up the finance center at NIFC to, um, to orchestrate all that. Uh, the BIA pathways program, we're continuing to build. Is any of the HR folks in here today with BIA? Okay. Anyhow, this is a partnership between um, the Office of uh, Trust Services, Natural Resource Youth Coordinator, which is Gayla Schock, and I wanted to introduce you guys to her today, but I don't see her here. Uh, and also the Office of Human Capital Management for the BIA. They're a very instrumental part in this. If we don't have them, uh, we can't get these students placed. And then uh, Salish Kootenai College. So we've got, um, we basically reor reorganized Office of Trust Services to include 45 additional FTE on the org chart for forestry students, 25 for forestry students, 20 for fire students. We're providing $5,000 annually for financial assistance for these students. We're guaranteeing them summer employment and we're non-competitively placing them into BIA positions upon successful completion of the program. So in wrapping up my presentation, uh, I just wanna emphasize the, fu the future is all about performance integration as far as, as I'm concerned in my current role in DC. And I, and I talked about this a little bit the other day, but what story does Indian forestry want to tell um, BIA leadership, um, the department, OMB, Congress? Uh, what trust responsibility resource problem or opportunity are we trying to address? Is our message consistent or are we uh, and are we a unified front? 
So is the, is the messages coming from individual tribes differing or are we coming as a unified, consistent message? And what does our performance look like? What are we um, actually doing out there on the ground that's a good thing uh, and a good investment? And what does that investment cost? You know, what is the cost of doing that work out on the ground? Um, and once again, like I said the other day, ITC technical support remains crucial in advancing Indian forestry. And, you know, like Phil said, this is a partnership, BIA, tribe, we're all doing this together to maximize uh, good things happening on the land and maximizing budget. So with that, I thank you very much and I think I'm done. <laughs>